Last time we looked at the cost of investing. We learnt that managers have large overheads, not least salaries and bonuses, and you pay the bill. Over time, charges that sound modest can seriously erode your savings. We found that many charges consumers incur are hidden in the small print. And to add insult to injury, fund management charges have been rising year on year. So conventional active investing, in other words, paying someone to pick your investments and decide when to buy and sell, is expensive. And as we've also heard, only very few managers are able to outperform the market consistently. But is there an alternative? A strategy that costs us less, but produces a higher than average return after costs in the long run? Yes, there is. It's called passive investing. Passive investing uh, is really more about the vehicles of choice uh, for a given investor. So it's about using index funds as opposed to trying to select active managers that may or may not ultimately best their market benchmark. If you take a passive fund that's going to follow the FTSE 100, the person running that fund buys shares in every single one of the, the 100 companies within the FTSE 100. So it directly follows or replicates the index is a, sort of jargon that's used, as opposed to an active manager who will say, I'll only pick 20 shares, it's I think the best 20 in the FTSE 100. You're then relying on the skill of that fund manager to found the best 20. Mathematics tells us that the average active investor and the average passive investor in a market where all of those investors equal the market should earn identical returns net of fees. Now when we subtract the fees from those products, what we see is because passive funds are inherently less costly to operate, they tend to outperform active funds over time. Although it accounts for only a small share of the wealth management industry in the UK, passive investing is much more popular in the United States. American academics have made a compelling case for it since the 1950s. In the 60s, economist William Sharp developed the capital asset pricing model, for which he was later awarded a Nobel Prize. It has to do with the relationship between the price of a security, its risks, and its expected return. And there are really sort of two key takeaways, if you will. One is that in that setting, the most efficient strategy for an investor is to hold basically a broadly diversified portfolio reflecting the market of securities that are available. Uh, and that gave birth to the notion of index funds. And the second is that there will be a reward in higher expected return, not guaranteed, but expected uh, for bearing risk, but the kind of risk for which the reward should be available is the risk of doing badly in bad times. After the capital asset pricing model came the efficient market theory, developed by Eugene Farmer and Ken French. The idea being that shares are always priced correctly because they already reflect everything that's publicly known about a company. More and more Americans were beginning to realize that paying a manager to buy and sell individual shares was a waste of time and money. Market efficiency is the idea that market prices adjust very quickly to new information. And theoretically, one would believe that, that market prices would incorporate all the known information that's available. And so if that is mostly true, which I think it is, um, then it's, it's very unlikely that any investment manager or investment fund or group will be able to have the knowledge and information to um, consistently take advantage of market errors. That doesn't say that other investors are stupid when they go out and hire active. What it says is if there is somebody who hires a successful active manager, there must be somebody else who's hiring an inferior active manager. Weston Wellington used to work for a firm of active fund managers. But the more he read about the evidence in favour of passive investing, the more it made sense. Almost everybody who adopts this particular investment viewpoint 
undergoes a similar journey. Because for most people, the only definition of investment advice is trying to forecast the future in some way. Which stocks will do the best, which managements are the best, which countries are the best to invest in, and so on. And it takes a while to understand that there might be a more useful alternative. Now, my particular journey was a function of first 15 years or so doing it the conventional way, reading all the usual sources and listening to all the usual experts and never really questioning it. But then when I had to uh, undertake a position of making these decisions myself, I was the uh, research director in charge of developing model portfolios, and I was uh, going to be held accountable for the performance of the various managers I selected, and I had to keep track of what my performance was. When you, someone starts to keep track of what your recommendations are, it's a bit humbling to discover, well, maybe you weren't quite as smart as you thought you were. It was while working as an investment specialist in New York that Tim Hale came to the same conclusion. He believes that many active managers happily gamble with other people's savings while quietly investing their own money in index funds. A quick example was when I first arrived there, I was trying to put forward together a, a, an investment performance uh, track record for the firm that I was working for. And ultimately, um, you know, being un unable to find consistent performance you know, within the data that we had. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, that began, began to sow the, the, the seeds of doubt in, in my mind. My pension plan was full of passive investments, uh, which I think is quite a telling sort of indication of, uh, I guess, the increasing cynicism. Although public awareness of the advantages of passive investing is very much lower here in the UK than it is in the US, British investors actually have more to gain from passive than their American counterparts. That's because fund management charges are higher here in Britain than they are in the States. No wonder the move away from active fund management is starting to gain momentum on this side of the Atlantic. As company pension schemes become less popular, investors are forced to do it for themselves, so they need to be more and more aware that the low charges associated with, say, passive investment will ultimately, over very long periods of time, benefit them considerably relative to being with active fund managers. So, to summarise, passive investing is not so much a theory as a matter of mathematical fact. There's a wealth of evidence supporting it, including the work of Nobel Prize-winning economists and studies have consistently shown that when costs are factored in, passive investing produces better returns than active.